and you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Now the prayer of agreement to settle your situation once and for all so that you can see the difference. Hi there. May the God of the Bible bless your life and fulfill all his promises he has promised to you. And there is one special place, Bishop David, that is the temple. Yes. The temple that was God's uh, idea, God's vision to bless his people. That's right. In the Bible, God gave directions for his house to be built very specific directions. And, and today in Sao Paulo, Brazil, we have a replica of this temple made in the same dimensions. That's right. God was the one who gave the direction for this temple. We could have chosen another place. They are beautiful and uh, famous places around the world. But the temple of Solomon is the house of the sacrifice. It's the place where God chose himself for his house. Yes, God built that house through King David and his son Solomon for himself. The place of sacrifice that God chose for himself. And that's why we are going to go now in this month of December to have this campaign that is the campaign of a uh, difference by the way this is a different place yes the universal church is all over the globe and we have big cathedrals yes big temples big churches but the temple of solomon is a different place very different because it's it's designed according to the directions of the bible it's for us, it's holy ground. The, the floor is made from stone from Israel. The walls are made with stone from Israel, from Jerusalem. And so when you walk into this place, you, you are basically in Jerusalem, right? That's right. And many people have never been to Jerusalem, to Israel, but when they go inside of the temple, they have the same exactly experience and i want you now to watch the many temples buildings that we have around the world and you see the difference between these buildings and the temple of solomon saint peter's basilica in the vatican designed by michelangelo the grand mosque of sheikh zayed built by the syrian architect Yusuf Adbaldeki, the White Temple, created by the Thai artist Charlemchai Kozipipat, the Church of the Sacred Family in Spain, built by Antoni Gaudi. There are more than 37 million temples of worship in the world, but only one carries within it the promise and the signature of the architect of the universe. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. The Temple of Solomon, the only temple in the world whose architect is God. Like you just said, the Temple of Solomon is the only building in the world whose architect is God. And so, God was the architect, he made the design, he made the plan. But now in this campaign of Israel, God wants to be the architect of your life, to change people's lives. He has a plan. He wants our lives to be different than anyone else on earth. That's right. He does not want just to build another temple. You are the temple. And maybe this temple, the temple of yours, you are the temple, you are sick. You are unemployed, unmarried, you are empty, you are depressed because the Spirit of God is not inside of you. 
But once the Holy Spirit is inside of you, it is visible the difference in your life. Just like the case of Daniel. The Bible sh uh, shows us that Daniel was chosen because he had an excellent spirit. And it is says that the book of Daniel 6, that uh, the king heard about Daniel. He heard about the spirit that was in him. He said, I have heard of you that the Spirit, capital letter, Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understand and excellent wisdom are found in you. So, when a person receives the Spirit of God, all these qualities are, are found in a person. Well, Daniel, uh, uh, he distinguished himself from others. He made a difference. And, and the king who had seen many things, who had heard many wise people, was impressed with Daniel. To impress a normal person is one thing, but to impress a king, it must have been amazing. Yes, something great, something extraordinary. And it says there, See how he distinguished himself. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satyrs because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to set him. You see that when the king saw that he distinguished himself, he was, let me say, wiser than others. Yes. Yes. So he put him in charge of the realm to be above everybody. And he was a foreigner. That's right. He, he, he didn't belong to that, that country. But he wanted to put him, even though he was a foreigner, in charge of everyone because of his wisdom. Because everything that he did worked out. He was a success. Whatever job the king gave to him, he did a very good job with it. It says that, read once again. Daniel distinguished himself. This is the difference. Yes. A person that wants to make a clear difference in life, to be different, a different husband, wife, father, mother, to be a different person, you need to have the Spirit of God that is the Holy Spirit. And in this campaign of Israel at the Temple of Solomon, we are going to go to the altar. Over 10,000 bishops and pastors will be there determined, will be there crying out, present your requests before God for what? For your 2022 to be a different year. We are going to finish the year doing something different to have this clear difference. When, when do 10,000 bishops and pastors come together to pray like this? It's something different. It's, it's not normal. You don't see this. You don't see that kind of meeting, that kind of power. You know, when they pray, spiritually speaking, there's going to be an earthquake. That's right. Something is going to happen. The earth is going to shake. We are going to pray in a few. We have joined with us many bishops and pastors from all over the USA. They are ready and in a few... We are going to pray. All these men of God, you see, they are ready to pray. And I want you to stay with us. Before we go to the testimony, I want you to see that faith is the key. The key that transformed the foreigner, David, I mean Daniel, into, uh, he was above all the governors. Yes. Distinguishing himself because they found in him a different spirit. A different faith. Deja vu. It's the same old story all over again. It's like your life is on repeat. Nothing ever changes. You take the same way to work, eat the same lunch at the same place, and watch the same shows. Life has become boring and predictable. Living in this constant loop may feel deceptively comforting, but you're stuck in the same old problems. 
you know you need to break out, but complacency causes you to just accept this bland existence. God didn't create us just to exist, but to truly live and enjoy all that he has given us. It's time to tap into the strength that God has given you and reclaim your life. All you need is faith. Faith that tomorrow will be better and different than yesterday, and that each following day will be new and exciting, because with God, every day is a new beginning. Faith is the key to change. When you use your faith, you can move mountains. You do have faith to move mountains. Let us in this campaign do it. Let me tell you something. Different actions brings different results. If you do the same thing over and over and again, the result will be the same. But if you do different things, you are going to provoke different results. We will go live now to Washington, D.C. We have Bishop Albert over there with the testimony. Testimony of someone that is now different because in this person, this young man, we have found now the Spirit of God. Uh, Bishop Albert. Hello, Bishop Joshua, Bishop David. I have by my side here, Kevon. Today, he is a transformed man. The Spirit of God is inside. But before, before the altar, before you, you receive the spirit of difference, who was Kevon? Kevon, before I um, received the spirit of difference, Kevon was a person that um, I didn't have a father figure growing up as well as I, um, I lost my mom and grandmother uh, back to back. And due to this, it caused me to be very depressed um, and very angry as well. And I had this, this very strong um, urge to want to go out and drink. Uh, I, I would literally drink about three bottles of champagne every single night um, to try to fill this void. But it wouldn't work at all because I'll end up um, somewhere in the back of this same bar just uh, crying my eyes out. For, for how long were you living like this? I was living like this for about a year. So I can say you lost the two pillars of your life. First, your mom, second, your grandmom, and you were never raised from your father. So you had all the reasons to go downhill. Yes. Three bottles right. of champagne. Yes. Smoking. Yes. How was uh, night for you? Um, it was, I could barely sleep nighttime. Um, I had thoughts of actually committing suicide that I, I rarely um, told because I live with my brother. And so we'll talk and I'll just be like, everything is fine. Um, but deep down, I was still hurting. Mm -hmm. um, and life was just, life just seemed worthless. And I really, I really just had like a lot of things and intentions and thoughts mm -hmm. um, that I wanted to carry out. For how long were you depressed? I was depressed for about, I'll say the entire year, the entire year. But nobody would know because I'll smile, you know, I'll joke around, laugh. Um, even outside, you wouldn't be able to tell, but I was very, very depressed inside. You were invited to come to the church. Uh, yes. Bishop Albert, sorry, yes, sir. To, sorry to interrupt both of you, but we see here that because uh, uh, he did not have the Holy Spirit, we everybody knows that grandparents, parents, uh, sooner or later they will pass. Right. So in his case, back to back, the mother and the grandmother. First was the mother, then the grandmother also died. A young man without the Holy Spirit in this world, he was depressed and started drinking, uh, smoking, party, only to feed the void that he had inside. And even then, he was sad, he was still crying, nothing was changing. It's like, when we don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't have the wisdom to overcome. The storm comes, and it's like, you know, we're in a boat, but we sink. We, we don't know how to overcome. We don't have that resilience, that strength 
to make it through hard times. And, and as he was speaking, I was wondering here, how many are watching us right now here on DTV, Direct TV, and many other platforms, social media, and they are in the same situation many. because they lost many. a loved one. And all this person wants is to forget that moment. The, the funeral services, the burial, the, the moment that they left the cemetery, now the void they have inside and also in the house. And Bishop, even more, they begin to live a life that would be a disappointment to that person right. who died. Because their mother wants them to have a good life. But then life begins to go down because of the sadness, because of the depression. And uh, let me ask you something. Uh, um, you were trying to drink, smoke, party, to forget that moment. But even before, let me ask you, how was your life even before your mother and grandmother passed away? Um, before my mother and grandmother passed away, my life was at, were pretty much at ease. I rarely had any problems or anything, even though I knew my, my dad wasn't in my life, but my mom and grandmother were like the strong, um, they were there for me. Um, and I actually, some parts of my life I lived with my uh, grandmother and then other parts uh, I lived with my mom. And I took care of them and they took care of me as well. So it was pretty much... Uh, I didn't really have any problems or anything growing up, um, but of course when I lost them, it really hit. And by me being um, one of uh, my only two brothers, um, I had to experience the uh, going to the ICU and seeing them um, by myself. And I was a young man, I was 21, so having to see them in the ICU, someone that you can you remember um, just up talking, laughing with you now, uh, seeing tubes stuffed down their mouth, and it really hurt. It really hurt. It very bad. The Holy Spirit is for moments like this. In a few, uh, Kevon, you are going to be back talking over there with uh, Bishop Albert. But I want to show to everybody what the difference that the Holy Spirit causes inside of a person. There are always those special few who've stood out in this world, who made a difference and are admired. They're architects, scientists, educators, and those who are on the front line. Some come from elite universities or were trained by the best in their field. And while those things are valuable, only one thing is greater than all of that. Only one thing can make the greatest difference in your world. A difference that will last forever. The Bible says, Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve Him. That one thing is the Spirit of God Himself dwelling inside you. Don't just strive to make a difference. Be the difference in everything that you do. With the Spirit of God, you become a light wherever you go, changing the world around you and revealing to everyone who sees you that God is real, powerful, and alive in you. When you, you, you came into the church, you were invited to the, to the church, you entered this building First of all, did anyone judge you? Not at all. I came with, um, I had locks, dreadlocks in my hair, um, which is funny because I had this hairstyle due to the influence of my brother. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't something that I really wanted, but it was certain things he'll tell me and it inspired me to just wear the hairstyle and um, from there. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I would see just how I was, um, kind of people will react to me. And at the time I didn't quite understand, but then I actually did some research on based upon what the, with the, uh, that hairstyle meant. Mm -hmm. And I completely understood. Coming to the church, you start doing the chain of praise. Um, and then came the campaign of Israel. Talk to me, what did you do in the campaign of Israel? What moved you to come to the altar? So um, the last campaign we had, um, which was the Fort of Zabak. 
uh, just hearing about how um, Jacob uh, wrestled with God all night. Um, this was something to become an, a new man. And when hearing about this, because previous campaigns that came up, I didn't really take it any like seriously. I'll just give anything. Um, I'll say, well, God knows. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and do this campaign just because I'm being told to. Um, but this campaign, it was something different. I said, I, I really want to become this new man. And I believe I seen the potential within myself that God was showing, mm -hmm. but I had to take the step first. And so um, just hearing about uh, and receiving inspiration, even when we were doing, when we were getting up, I believe it was, um, we were waking up early. I don't really remember the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I was receiving inspiration. You, in, the, in the previous campaign, you started doing different things yes. than you did in the other ones. Yes. Like um, you were praying a different time. What about the sacrifice in the previous campaign? Was it like the other ones or, or was different? Um, so the previous campaigns, I barely sacrificed anything. I would literally just um, just give. Mm -hmm. But this campaign, um, one of the main things, one of the main things I did was cut my hair. Um, and this was something that was on my conscience. And I, I believe um, at the time, it was, I had, of course, the voice, the voice of the devil telling me, just giving me all of these situations mm -hmm. or why not. And he was, of course, using my brother. And um, as well, I, uh, I, I, just, I just made a decision. I was like, I'm going to just cut my hair because I know this is something that, that's mm -hmm. holding me back. And as well as um, the hair at times, I feel like it holds a past. It mm -hmm. holds a very strong past. So I made that decision. You cut, cut your hair. hair. Nobody told you to do so. No. And then you did your spiritual sacrifice, your physical sacrifice and your financial sacrifice. What was your financial sacrifice? So my financial sacrifice, what I did, um, so I received um, payment for the first, first uh, I believe it was the first two weeks um, of my job I was working. And as well, I got some extra, extra mm -hmm. cash. And mm -hmm. I gathered all of that up. And then I also um, did like a uh, delivery, delivery mm -hmm. service. And I just continue, I just, uh, saved everything up and I gave. The day you climbed the altar, the day you put the sacrifice on the altar, what happened to Kevon on that day? The day I put a sacrifice on the altar, um, literally as soon as I stepped off the altar, I just felt this peace. Before that, um, even me going outside, I just, it was just, it just felt different. Um, I could feel like tension and things, but once I walk across the altar and I, um, once I gave my sacrifice and walked across the altar, like this peace just came over me. And at the time, um, even the environment I was staying in um, before, before the campaign, it just felt heavy. Um, the, house, the house I was in as well. And after the campaign, this peace, this peace just came over me. You saw the pictures of the, the before and the after. Kevon, you saw the pictures of the before and the after. Today you see a new man because the spirit of the Lord dwells inside of him. And this is the aim of this campaign, to turn you into a new person with an excellent spirit. At any universal church, you can come and you will be able to participate of this campaign of faith. Right now we are going to pray and we are going to ask the spirit of God to come upon you. You can get close to your TV, to your computer, wherever you are, please close your eyes.
Lord and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the altar we pray right now, together with all the bishops, the pastors, on behalf of all those who want a different life, a life that resembles your power, a life that shows that you are alive. We have seen, my Lord, that many of those who come into the church have been living like slaves, eating the worst, dwelling in the worst places. But my Lord, this situation is going to change because when they climb the altar, the spirit of excellence will come inside of them as came inside of Kevon and all those whom we saw in the song, the Spirit of the Lord, visit right now all those who are praying with their envelopes, those who are praying, my Father, asking you to honor their faith in this campaign because they are going to do something that they have never done before, something that will come to these people, and we bless them with the Spirit Spirit of the Lord, wherever these people are, my Lord, we declare them blessed. We declare them free, and we declare them, my God, a new person. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and you who believe say, Amen. Go to the altar with your life, all that you are, all that you have, all your dreams. You go to the altar to empty yourself, to give your, yourself, your life to the Lord. He fills you with his spirit. And wherever you go, if you go to the north, east, west, south, wherever you go, you are going to be different. And the people you perceive they will notice, they will see it, that you are a different person. And your life, in all its aspects, is also different. I want you to know you, you are watching us from Texas, from Dallas, that this Wednesday, we are going to have a special prayer, a special service in this place, in Dallas. We are going to be there. Uh, the address is over there. It is 325 West uh, Senna Avenue in Dallas. I am going to be there and I am sure the Spirit of God in this place will manifest himself this Wednesday, 7 p.m. in Dallas. But also at every universal church, Bishops and pastors will be this Wednesday in the same faith, in the same spirit. You can be 
and become a different person. Tomorrow again, we are going to continue with our journey, our prayers in preparation to the Temple of Solomon, campaign of Israel, now in this month of December. God bless you. See you soon. to break you away from God. What is the Campaign of Israel? How can you attract God's attention and provoke a transformation in your life? Join us live from Monday to Friday, 9 p.m. Central Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, 